The AI assistants of the future are multimodal. Check out this demo we built using VoiceFlow and GPT Vision to identify a location via text message. So we connected VoiceFlow to Twilio via the VoiceFlow API to create a text message assistant that you can text from anywhere that's powered by VoiceFlow. Then what we did is to use the upload functionality from your phone to be able to capture the image, send that over to VoiceFlow, pass it to GPT-4, have GPT-4 explain the image, save all of that to memory, and allow you to actually ask it follow-up questions. So you can use this for anything like we're doing here with the Eiffel Tower to creating a system that can understand bills, street signs, anything you really kind of see in your day-to-day -day life that you can text from anywhere. So to skip ahead and get the tutorial on how Nico built this, and warning, this is a developer tutorial, so you need to be a developer for this, go ahead and click the link on the top right of the video, and that'll take you to Nico's deep dive video and how he built this step-by-step -step and the repo that you can clone to get this up and running. Now let's get back to the core part and understand what is GPT-4 Vision. We're also going to be looking at Google's Gemini Pro and their vision model. Both of them are structured in pretty much the same way, but Google Gemini Pro has a couple different functionalities. Now, that's to say that both of these models currently have vision separated, but in the next update, they're likely going to have them combined. So you can have one model that pretty much does everything. We'll do another update video when that comes out. GPT-4 Vision is an AI model that's specifically trained on image data. So you're able to pass it either the image URL or the base and code data for the image for it to be able to analyze. And how it works is it analyzes the image to determine what's in the image or creating a description of it. And then using a text prompt that you can send in alongside the image, it then applies that text prompt to the description and figures out what to respond next. Gemini works in the exact same way. So we're gonna go ahead and look through both of their documentation. We're gonna start with GPT-4 Vision and then go to Gemini's. In the GPT-4 documentation, you'll notice that there's a model called GPT-4 Vision Preview. So this is the model that you wanna access that has the vision capabilities. Now, within here, you'll see that the actual structure of the call is pretty straightforward. You've got your content type text, which is your text prompt. And then you've got your image, which is gonna be your image URL. Now, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do with this. The first one is that you can actually send multiple images in with your GPT-4 request. Now, this becomes really powerful when you start to think about different applications. So for example, if I wanted to go ahead and process a video, that's where I would start to use multiple images. You may have seen videos of people online doing kind of like voiceovers or video descriptions using GPT-4 Vision. This is how they're doing it. There's a quick guide here on GPT-4's actual website but the summary is that you're taking your video and you're using a program to chop it up into different image frames. And then what you're doing is that you're sending a call to GPT-4 Vision and you're taking a certain amount of those frames and actually sending it all together in one call. So you're sending one call with about you know, 50, 60, 70 images, whatever it might be. Obviously you want them to be lower quality so you're not burning tokens but GPT-4 Vision is able to actually look at all of those and interpret them according to your text prompt and come out with a description. So in this case, if I'm sending it a video, it's gonna be able to look at all the screens of the video and respond with a description. But in our case, we're gonna use it for something a bit more simple, which is just one image. We're gonna be sending it and then understanding what that image actually entails. Google Gemini is structured in pretty much the same way. So if we go to their documentation and we scroll down to Gemini Pro Vision and we go to the request body, you'll see here that this is actually the important part. So at the top here, we've got our text string. So this is the equivalent of the GPT-4 vision text string where you're passing in the information that you want the AI to be able to look at. The next part is the actual file data. So this is where you're passing in either the file URL or the encoded uh, string for the, in, for the model to be able to analyze. Now, one of the more powerful things with Google Gemini Pro, you can see there's a type here because there's a number of different file types that are supported. So if I go down to the type section here, you can see that it's not just images, but it's also videos. So this is likely doing the exact same thing that GPT-4 Vision was doing when you're using it with videos, which is just takes a bunch of the screens and then analyze them in sequence. But it is a bit more conveniently packaged uh, and it's a max of about two minutes or 20 megabytes to use a video with Google Gemini for now. We'll likely see this video version expanded dramatically in the future to include longer video times or faster processing. That's likely how it's working today. As soon as Google Gemini is ready, we're going to be adding it to voice flow so you can get in and start actually playing around with it. Now, it's important to note that when you're doing this in VoiceFlow, VoiceFlow does not have a native image upload functionality. And so when you're building around this, you want to do one of two things. A, if you're a developer, you can connect VoiceFlow to any other external platform that has image upload capabilities. So examples are like the SMS one that we showed, WhatsApp, Discord, Slack, 
basically any platform that allows you to upload an image. So to help you do that, if you go to our developer documentation, so developer.fullyslow.com, we have a bunch of examples that are built out with integrations that'll allow you to clone the repository, make modifications, and launch your own integration. So some examples are WhatsApp, Discord, Slack, Telegram, and Twilio. And these will give you the structure to be able to create any sort of integration that you'd like. Reminder, these are developer tutorials, but if you want to go ahead and check out developer.voiceo.com, I'll link it up in the top right. That'll take you right to our examples, like the one we showed with Nico earlier. The second option is that if you are not a developer, there are a number of other tools and plugins that you can use with VoiceFlow to add in different extensions. So here's an example of a community member that was able to use GPT Bora Vision with a third-party extension called VoiceGlow to be able to add in the image file upload functionality and a couple other ones. Take a look. In this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate GPT4 Vision into VoiceFlow. You're going to be able to upload your image. It's going to then show up. It's going to understand the amount of bedrooms, the bathrooms, and the total amount of rooms that this image has. It's then going to be able to give a property recommendation based on that, and that's all using GPT4 Vision. Now, so to build this, we're going to need VoiceFlow, VoiceGlow, Make.com, and Google Sheets. Now, it's important to note that VoiceFlow is incredibly powerful if you have a developer. That's the way VoiceFlow works. It's got a great UI canvas, and then we expose all the APIs to allow you as a developer or your development team to be able to integrate that and customize it whichever way you want. That being said, there is a lot that you can do if you are not a developer with the help of some other tools and extensions, but just keep that in mind that VoiceFlow is most powerful when you are working with a developer. Now, if you're interested in going down this road and learning how Brandon actually built some of those bots, I'm gonna link to his video up here and down in the description below. He's got a bunch of great videos as do so many other content creators in our Discord community. And so if you wanna go find them, I'll link to his channel below and I'll also link to our Discord below so you can join and see what everyone's building. But let's hop into VoiceFlow and actually see what it looks like if I were to make the API call within there step-by-step so you know how to get started and how you can actually leverage API calls in VoiceFlow. This part just focuses on GPT-4 Vision because Google Gemini Pro is not pre-release yet, but once it is, you can use the exact same method to do that as well. So here I'm in my VoiceFlow workspace. Let's go ahead and create a new assistant. And we're just gonna call this GPT-4V and we're gonna pick chat. Now inside, we're gonna build a super simple assistant. So I'll just go ahead and delete these starter blocks. Just for the purposes of this, we're going to build an assistant that just captures the image URL, captures a, a, a text prompt, and then actually makes an API call to the GPT-4 Vision API. So let's start off with a really simple text step. And we're going to say, what is the image you want to analyze? And let's connect this up. We'll add a capture step. So under listen, so capture just captures information and saves it into a variable. And the variable is we we're, we're going to want to create one just for the image itself. So create a new variable called image URL. And now whatever user puts in this is going to go into this variable. Then we're going to do the same thing. So to speed this up, I'm just going to copy and paste this. And we're going to do the same thing now just to capture the user question. What is your question? And we will save this to a new variable and we'll call it question. Now let's just title up these blocks. So capture image and capture question. Now for the real work, we're gonna actually use an API step to make an API call. So let's drag out the API step here, put it into voice flow, connect these up. And now let's check what the documentation has to say. So if I go ahead and open up the vision API documentation here, you can see that I require two headers and then this is the body and it is a post request to this endpoint. So I'm gonna just open this up. I'm gonna change this to post and let's grab this URL. We're gonna add in two headers here. So content type and authorization. And this is gonna be application slash JSON. And one more, which is authorization. And this is going to be bearer and then my uh, open AI API key. So rather than put it right here, I'm just going to create a variable called open AI API key. And now I'm going to fill this variable somewhere else. So I'll show you how to do that in a bit. But for the body, we're just going to go ahead and capture what we've got here. 
and we're going to make sure this is raw and put it in. Now, what's important here is that the model is GPT-4 vision, that's fine. But for the text, I actually want this to be our variable. So in this case, I'm going to be our question variable. So this is going to insert the question that we captured. And then the URL is going to be our image URL. So let's just go ahead and get rid of this one. So this is going to be image URL. And let me just double check. Yeah, image URL. Great. So now if I test request, so if I hit send request, this is going to ask me to prompt uh, to put in my API key, a question, and then the image URL. So let's just go ahead and test this out. So I'm going to go and look for an image. So let's go cat playing piano. And let's find an image that we can use. Perfect. I like this one, it's cat playing piano. Let's copy the image address. And let's add this in the image URL. And my question is going to be, what is happening in this picture? Now I'm going to add in my open API key and then hit generate, but I'm just going to crop this part out. Great. So we got a response back from GPT for vision. So that way we know our API call works and let's see. So underneath choices and then message, it says in this picture, there's a cat standing on its hind legs with one of its front paws touching the keys on the piano. The cat appears to be in the middle of an action that resembles a human playing the piano. It's cute and amusing image. Wow, this is a great description. And so we know our API step works now. There's a couple things we want to do. First off is we want to capture this response. So this is going to be in response.choices0.message.content. So I'm just going to remember that and then I'm going to type it down here and capture response. Again, if you're unsure, just like copy this response into GPT and say, how can I reference this? Important note here is that this entire first response, so everything above the status code, is captured in a default variable called response. So I'm just going to go down here, hit capture response, and inside here is going to where I'm going to enter what I just mentioned, so response.choices0, so the first choice, message and content, and I want to save this to a variable called vision response. Perfect. And so now what I can do is I can actually display that back in a text step here. So now this should work as I've set it up. The one last thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I can dynamically generate my API key. So what I'll do is I'll add a set step to the beginning of my conversation here, and I will call this API key. We're going to apply this to the uh, open AI API yeah. key. And I'm going to go ahead and enter my API key here. So you're going to want to do between two apostrophes because it's a string. Great. So now the API key is in there. So let's go ahead and give it a quick test. So first I'm going to add in my cat picture here. Next, I'm going to say, what is happening in this picture? And now it's going to actually go ahead, hit the GPT-4 API, like we just did with all the questions and information we just added and come back with the response. Great. We have a response and bam. So. It's able to kind of go ahead and describe the image itself. And now I can start to use this response in other aspects. So there's a couple of other videos that might be relevant. The one I'll point to down below is memory. So using memory within VoiceFlow. So by default, VoiceFlow has AI steps. So you'll notice that I use the API step for this to access the model, just because we don't have GPT-4 vision on the models yet. We may add this in the future, but if you do decide to use the AI steps after this, you can go ahead and select memory. And so now you can actually include the response from the image in your memory and start using the description from the image in your conversation. So you can remember in the demo that Nico did, he had a picture of the Eiffel Tower. It talked that it said that it was the Eiffel Tower and he asked how tall is it? So what you're doing in that case is you're using the description that's given because the description is added to memory. And then from there, you can use that description in the rest of your flow. So this should help get started with GPT-4 Vision and using it at VoiceFlow. I'd recommend checking out some other tutorials to learn how to do other functionalities in VoiceFlow, like use memory, use the AI steps, embed iframes, to start really building out a robust assistant that you can have your users interact with to kind of do anything from real estate chatbots to customer support automation to the rest, to whatever you can imagine. And that's it for the video. If you made it this far, remember to subscribe for more videos like this and tutorials on how to use VoiceFlow. And if you are using VoiceFlow, feel free to hop into our Discord community. That is the best place to ask questions. So my name is Daniel. I'm the head of growth at VoiceFlow, and I'll see you on the next video.